welcome. We're so excited today because Bishop Provenzano will be with us to share his thoughts on Pentecost in our sermon today. It's pre-recorded and we will be editing it in with the rest of this service, so you'll see it in just a few minutes. But I also have to give a shout out to these beautiful Pentecost vestments that St. Anne's uh, owns. Everybody here in the room with me now has been laughing at me because I've been so tickled <laughs> to be wearing these bright colors. Aren't they beautiful? Our opening hymn today is number 225. It should be in your bulletin that you received electronically on Thursday. So please open it up and join us with 220. Oh, I take that back. It'll probably be in your hymnals or is it in the bulletin? It's in the it is in the hymnal, 225. Secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Almighty God, on this day, you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this point, and at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Psalm 104 is printed in your bulletins. O Lord, how manifold are Yonder in the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. 
first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities but it's the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activate, activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty Come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet 
there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Throughout my ordained ministry, I have loathed any attempt by preachers using themselves as an example in a sermon. Today, I will do that loathsome thing because my prayer and preparation for preaching today leave me little choice. And so I beg your indulgence. In the mid-1970s, I was a member of a cloistered religious community. I lived in Eremo Beato Bernardo, the hermitage of Blessed Bernard. The monastery was named for the local Capuchin Franciscan friar who lived in the town in the hills in Corleone, Sicily, who had been named by the church as Blessed. I had entered the community to live a monastic expression of the Franciscan rule, to escape the world in that classic intent of monastic life, fuga mundi, to flee the world. I was convinced of a religious vocation and sought as a very young man to escape the distractions, curiosity, and the work of the world outside the walls of a monastery. In an effort to learn, to pray, to study, to have union with God. I lived that cloistered life with 30 other brothers for nearly two and a half years. Until one warm, sunny, late April day when I experienced a personal but very real Pentecost event. It was siesta time, and as I often did not sleep at midday, I would climb up on the inside wall of the monastery and look out over the small city of Corleone. This day in the stillness of a warm afternoon I eavesdropped on a conversation on the street below the wall. A father washing his car, talking, actually negotiating with his teenage children about the use of their money, priorities of their family life, and the need of the children to live within the family budget. That was a Pentecost moment for me. Everything changed that afternoon and in the days that followed. The disciples were locked away for fear of the world following the events of Good Friday and the days that followed. They were bewildered, scared, and not knowing what to do next. The risen Christ comes and stands in their midst and says, peace be with you. And as we have learned and heard from the Acts of the Apostles, having been encouraged by the gift of the Holy Spirit, they emerged from that locked room, preaching in various tongues and giving witness to the reality of the resurrection. Pentecost is often referred to as the birthday of the church. It may be an oversimplification, but actually describes that movement of the Holy Spirit that released the disciples and empowered them to reveal the redemption of all of humanity found in the cross and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As we have lived through the past 12 weeks of quarantine and isolation for fear of the illness associated with COVID-19 
the pandemic, each of us, I am certain, have longed for a return to what we believe to be normal. But we have discovered, we have discovered, haven't we, that our way of being, the craziness of our existence, the way in which we carried on in life was not normal at all. We have learned some significant lessons about our place in life, the importance of the people around us each day that we often take for granted, the choices we make, the assumptions we carry, the evaluation of what we believe is essential. We all now understand that what we imagined about the priorities of our common life might have been a little too self-serving and a little too exclusionary to actually be called common life. It appears that social distancing and a bit of isolation has taught us each how to appreciate the gift and genuine need of each other in reality. We are relearning the holiness of the human family. We're having a Pentecost event as a people anew. As members of the church, the people of God, we know well that the celebrations of the liturgical calendar are never ever meant to be solely occasions to recall a past historical or biblical event. The incarnational theology that forms our liturgical and sacramental life dictates that our celebrations encompass the real time experience of the people of God. Today, this celebration of Pentecost provides us the opportunity to be renewed by God's Holy Spirit, not in wishful thinking, not in a delusion of returning to some misconceived normalcy, but in holy expectation of God acting in our time to move the church into the moments of terror and fear so many of us are experiencing and transforming this experience into a time of deep and abiding peace that God brings to us, breathes on us, and creates in us to move out beyond the walled in reality to a transformed movement of sharing Jesus' love and compassion with a hurting and confused world. The Pentecost event as recorded in scripture, did not change the world outside that locked room. It created the church to serve and help transform the world outside the locked room. Out of our deep prayer, our liturgical and sacramental life, the church must, absolutely must, serve the world, challenge the world, and overcome the sin and selfish greed that infects the world as a means of further breathing the peace and wholeness that was the original intent of the Creator and sealed for all of humanity in the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That April day in Corleone was a Pentecost event in which the common everyday experience of a family was the vehicle by which the Holy Spirit moved my heart and informed my will to understand that what I firmly believed was the direction of my life for which I sacrificed so much else in my life was misguided 
and not of God, or at least not totally on mark for what God had in store for my life. There have been many Pentecost events in the over 45 years that have followed, all of which I remember and for which I give thanks this day as they find their place in this great solemnity of the church. I pray this is true for you as well, that this feast of Pentecost, this feast of the ministry of the church may include all those moments and times in your life in which God has created rich, unex unexpected experiences of grace, transformation, and maybe healing in your life. I invite you to look for them in your own life, especially in the places where you are locked away in fear or in complacency. I invite you to embrace and not merely endure this moment in which we are all apart in the midst of this pandemic and pray that the Holy Spirit breathe upon you, your family and your loved ones, the people all around you to renew the face of the earth and to recognize the face of God and the will of God in all things, common and holy. Amen. If you would all please join me in the reaffirmation of our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You will find the prayers of the people printed in your bulletins. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church. That, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That light perpetual shine upon them. We pray.
praise you for our saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I offer this prayer. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake in this time. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable and take proper precautions. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or paying their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close, remember those who do not have that option. May we who have to cancel our vacations and trips, remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market, remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for our time at home remember those most vulnerable who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time, when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us yet find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen. Amen. Now let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. sorry, and we humbly, humbly repent. repent. For the, the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. Dietrich, please stand. Sue, please. please. Julia, Adam, please. Peace. Everyone, um, I know by now that you have uh, opened your newsletter from Thursday. I know you did. And you saw the announcement about what we're going to be doing in July. We will be gathering together again on July 5th, which is not far away. Uh, it may seem it, but it really isn't. We have rented a wedding tent that's going to go out on our lawn out here. And uh, I believe that gives us a lot of flexibility. We can space chairs out and uh, we can feel the air moving amongst us. We will all wear masks because uh, we wear masks for others ourselves and others. So we're going to do that. If you forget one, we will have mass. Um, uh, it is required for us to do that in worship service. Um, we're going to have three worship services each day because we're going to have a limit on how many people can gather at one time. Uh, we'll have the 8 o'clock service and the 9.30 service, just as always, but we're going to add an 11 o'clock service, and we're going to have an RSVP for them. I mentioned it in my newsletter. We will continue to remind you about this that on a particular day, the week before, you're gonna call in and speak to Diane Scanlon and reserve your chair at the service that you prefer. And if that service fills up, we will have other two other choices for you to pick from. So we look forward to gathering and being very safe when we do it and worshiping our Lord together again. Um, as uh, my tradition has become, I will be outside between 10.30 and 10.45 on Sunday to pass out 
uh, the communion that I consecrate here today. Uh, I hope to see you. It's a big joy for me every Sunday. I've been having um, around 30 people drive up, and I get to visit with each of you just for a moment, and it's a, a lovely opportunity. So I hope if you haven't come by for your communion that you'll do it this Sunday so that we can say hi to each other with our mask on um, uh, and just converse for a moment. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God. service continues in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith 
and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, and your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we await his coming glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with John and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Jesus Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen.
Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let's keep the feast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our service continues with, on the last page of your bulletin with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at all the wonders he has shown you. And may he bring you home, rejoicing through our doors once more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn today is in our hymnals. It's number 511. If you would all please join in singing number 511.
go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.